Well, why don't, since we're here and we have an opportunity to share with people a little bit about about the different models, why don't we take a look over here at our center console? Uh, it's again, it's a it's the, our roster 17, exactly the same hull, exactly the same hull design and characteristics. All we've done is say, for those people who want the wind in their hair and have a little more fun in that regard, opportunity for yeah, exactly a little bit of fishing. We do design our boats primarily as recreational boats with versatility. So for the person who says I want the best sport fish boat in the world, I'd be I'd be telling you a lie if I said this is the best sport fish boat in the world. But for somebody who wants to take their family tubing, wants to go to the beach, wants to do a little fishing, we've tried to design, not be all things to all people, but focus on the versatility more than be specifically a fish boat, so to speak. But you've got lots of room in terms of the, the interior of the boat. Um, you can, uh, lots of places to seat in terms of seating arrangement. A uh, couple of seats aft. Our boats come standard, just as you see our boats here with all the cushions, and accessories, etc. The only option on this boat behind me uh, is the is the uh, T-top, uh, which is a stainless T-top with a colored uh, canvas top to match the hull or hull treatment that a, that a customer orders. That's an option. However, all of our boats are outfitted uh, with material uh, so that you can always put a T-top on afterwards and bolt it into the floor. Uh, another thing that it is a self-bailing boat at 17 feet, so you're going to see two large ball scuppers on the transom. Just a little bit of a nicer feature. You find in boats of this size. If three big guys go to the back corner of the boat, uh, we don't want to see that uh, see water come in. I designed the boat just to run efficiently uh, with a with a 90 horsepower. So with five adults, you can jump out of out of the water with these boats and and do around 40, 43 miles an hour, depending on your sea conditions. Put a T-top on a boat like this; it adds a little drag, so you lose a little uh, velocity. Uh, I engineered the boats to be able to handle comfortably a 115, and that gets you in that 45 to 50 range in terms of uh, do, again, it all depends on your seat conditions. It, it affects your performance. Um, and uh, all our boats come standard, particularly the 17s, uh, with uh, Sea Star hydraulic steering. Again, that's not an option or an upgrade. That's a standard feature on the boat. Um, tilt wheel uh, is standard with uh, what we always used to call a Necker's knob. Um, the, uh, if you don't have a, a T-top, then you'll, you're going to see Bimini's be, be quite standard on the boat. You've got uh, an adjustable bench back here. I'm going to put the mic down. Uh, a cooler underneath the seat. Lots of storage underneath there. Can be drained or not drained depending on what the customer likes. Um, we have two different style windshields on the boat which you can have. Uh, this is our six inch windshield. We have another windshield that's about four to six inches higher. Typically what we do when a, when a boat's ordered with a T-top It'll come with that type of thing, but always has a stainless grab bar for when you like to get out and, and motor in some of those heavier seas. It's always nice to have something to grab onto if you need. And the boat we're looking at here, you've got a little bit of a teak upgrade on the side rails, so if you want a place to store some rods or, or other things, uh, your beach umbrella, etc., you can do that. Or you can order with a standard starboard, which is a, a industrial, you know, more industrial material you're going to find on most boats, and uh, less maintenance for those that don't want to wear it. This just dresses it up a little bit. You have easy access to your console from the front side with a nice big 14-inch uh, hatch. A nice 14-inch hatch, hatch on the side of the console, which allows you to uh, easily access your battery. Room for one or two batteries, depending on what you like to have. Another nice big bin up forward uh, for storage. Lots of volume there. Yep. Um, another bin forward here, uh, which is convertible into a, a, a bait well, uh, which is a high-speed bait well, if you wish. In fact, Ryan just ordered one. Um, which we're preparing. And uh, last but not least, you have a little an drained anchor locker on the foredeck of the boat. Uh, so a place to put your ground tackle. Uh, other than that, can you think of anything else, Brian, that we might like to mention from your experiences with the boat at shows or on the water? Yeah, just one thing I'd like to point out. One, uh, we are redesigning the bait well a little bit to make it more saltwater friendly. And as he says, uh, we've got one coming in and uh, we're going to put the high speed port in it so that uh, it's more saltwater friendly. Uh, also, one thing I'd like to point out that this uh, seat underneath the center console here, all of our hatches are lockable. So if you go out to dinner at night, you want to put some purses or whatever in there, you can grab a little padlock and you can lock all these compartments for some security. Um, and then once again, he, all, all these cleats on the top deck are flush. You can see some are up and some are down at this point. Um, but the nice part, you put them all down, you're not hooking your clothes on them as you're sliding off and on the boat or leaning over. Um, just a very, very nice boat, well thought out.
Yeah, Brian just made a comment, and he's right. Uh, one of the things that is important, and we pay a lot of attention to safety, I mean, self-bailing boats, positive flotation, certification and building the Coast Guard standards. We build to a higher level of standard in terms of the NNMA standards, in terms of certification of fuel systems and, and everything else. Obviously, we have ABYC and we've got the Coast Guard, but just to, again, another level. Um, not a requirement on a boat like this, but that's a swim platform. And we put a stainless steel swim platform with a, a three foot ladder on all our boats. It's a standard feature. You know, the reality is, hey, we're to go out on the water and have fun and go swimming and, and play on the beach. And so how do you get out? I mean, although it's, uh, you can see because of the size of our boats, you pull up on the beach, it's nice that a child or an adult can easily stand up on the side from the beach and get on on the side of the boat. But from the water, it's nice to have that as a standard feature. One thing, Scott, I'd like you to take a few minutes and explain in this video is, you know, we, we've taken this boat to a few shows and most everybody looks at this boat and wants to call it a 19 or a 20 foot boat when in fact it, it is a 17. And, and you and I know that in part it's because it's a three piece boat, which adds a lot of room to the inside. Will you take a few seconds and explain, you know, what that actually means and how you do that from a structural standpoint? Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a combination of the construction of the boat and fundamentally going back a few steps, it's the hull design. And, you know, uh, soft dry riding boats really don't need to be reserved for big boats. Uh, the re and our goal as a company 13 years ago when we got into the powerboat market uh, after 40 years of, of uh, designing higher end uh, boat, boats for the market was give people a big water ride and a small efficient boat. And so we started with some of the fundamentals of hull design. Uh, got ourselves, went back to a deep V hull, playing a little bit with some planing surfaces, um, and starting there, and that's what gives you that softness. In terms of then saying, okay, uh, I want a boat that's going to jump out of the water, and I want a boat that's going to give you that solid feel on the water, it's, uh, it, has, it can have a lot to do also with construction, not just the materials you use, but how you put a boat together. Uh, and at Rossiter, because we stand behind and give you a, a limited lifetime warranty on our boats, we want to make sure that we give you a stable, solid hull, and we build a three-part boat, and it gives us the advantage of actually a all-composite uh, hull, uh, a composite string molded stringer system, which is then bonded into the boat uh, and foam-filled. Then all your cavities are filled with uh, positive flotation, uh, and then we actually, instead of just hanging the, the deck and the liner off the, the rub rail of the boat, we actually have two parts, and so the liner is independent, and it's actually bonded all the top sides or all the sides of your boat are bonded to the exterior skin, the transom, the stringer grid, which is longitudinal and transverse, which is maybe arguably a little excessive in a boat like this, but that's what we do. And so what happens is you end up with a giant I-beam going in a bunch of different directions, and that's where that solid feel on the water comes from, a combination of that hull design characteristic and then the way the, the three-part boat goes together. Your deck is then goes on separately, and, and it's bolted all the way around. Uh, and then bonded to the transom. So that's what contributes to that sort of feel. That way it puts the liner out against the hull. So rather than a traditional two-piece boat, uh, which would bring the liner in like six, eight inches, gives you a lot more room inside the boat. Uh, and also some of the things that uh, might be worth pointing out is, is you also end up with a, a whole lot of storage cavity capacity in behind the boat. So you end up with lots of storage in behind here, as you can see, which is nice. You, uh, you have drain storage bins in the liner itself too on both sides. Uh, in this case, we've got some life jackets under there, uh, which is great. So in a boat of this size, again, 17 feet, a lot of open space because you're a three-part boat, a lot of storage. And, and in fact, you've got storage underneath your, your front seats here as well, same, everything drained. You've got lockable cabinets in behind the seats as well and storage under the bow, and I think that's one of the things that gives people that feeling of this is a lot bigger, as you say, from the out get-go, is that is this really a 17-foot boat? It looks like a 20, 22-foot boat. The nice thing is is it, that it also rides that, and that's, that's sort of my goal in life, is give you that bigger boat feel, that bigger boat space, that bigger boat ride without that, that investment. Another advantage of building the three-part boat, as you talked about, Brian, is that because that liner gets bonded and goes through, all of our, our storage spaces are all, all finished. Uh, as you can see in the back of the boat, up underneath the front, all of our bins are then inset, so they're finished as well. Uh, in these lockable bin areas behind here, they're also finished out. Uh, you can see on the floor here, those are your scuppers, uh, your big drains like in your kitchen sink. So any water that gets into the cockpit, primarily really from rain, uh, is going to go overboard. So you have two two two-inch drains in a, in a little boat of this size. 
Got a little boarding step you can see here to make it easy to get in and out of the boat uh, at that dockside. Uh, we offer different types of tops for the boats, traditional bimini tops, which are very popular down here in Florida. Uh, you can see the fittings on the boat here uh, that allow you to do that. Or we have the Florida style convertible top that fastens along the windshield, gives you a little more sun protection and a little more weather protection in the, the that Jan, you know, December, January, February months where the, the seas are getting a little rougher. You also want to attract the feature that a lot of people talk about is it's nice to have that windshield, but you want to have a little air getting into the boat. And so you have a nice old traditional uh, vented windshield. can be closed up on those colder days, uh, but opened up. So for the ladies that like to wear their hats to keep the sun off, but want the, the rest of the sun, it's not going to blow off, get out of the way. So, But at the same time, you can sit up on the seat back and, and have the wind in your hair in the boat like this. We also, all of our boats have a stainless steel boarding ladder on the back end. So if you're going to the beach and you want to get up on the beach, as you may have seen in some of our videos or shots on our, on our website, that it's a, a three rung ladder, so it's 36 inches, so it goes nice and deep into the water, so easy to get out, you know, uh, and onto the deck and then back into the boat. All of our hardware is, uh, for the most part, 316 or 309 stainless, so it's all saltwater ready. So although a traditional look from up north, uh, they're saltwater boats. All right, so this is the 14-footer, the and um, as you've heard earlier in the interviews, or maybe haven't listened to all of them yet, uh, we started out with three days, and this was my least favorite boat. I'm, I'm a big guy. I didn't want to be any part of a 14-footer out on open waters. And after three days of playing around on these boats in, in two to four foot seas out in the, the Atlantic here, um, this boat's just a lot of fun. You, you would never believe how well this boat can ride and handle in seas for its size. And uh, let Scott take a few minutes to kind of point out all the features of the boat, but it's it's a good little sports car. Yeah, and one of the reasons, as as uh, I like to point out, is that people surprise her is this has a 24 degree dead rise on it. This is a deep V hull. Something you're going to find in a, in a 20, 26 foot boat uh, in a little little sports sports car. The idea was to give you that big water ride, have fun, whether it's the kids, whether it's a dinghy for your yacht, whether it's mom wants to get out with the kids and go tubing or water skiing and just have fun with something small that's manageable, but most importantly, safe. As with all our boats, it's uh, self-bailing. You've got also got backup bilge pumps and automatic bilge pumps. It's a fully linered boat. Um, it's uh, got positive flotation. Fill it up with water, it's unsinkable level flotation is, is, is important in this category. Unlike other little boats of this size, it comes with a 19 gallon custom aluminum fuel tank. So you can go boating all day. You've got hundreds of miles of range in a tiny little boat uh, that you can cruise at 30, 33 miles an hour in comfortably, safely, uh, and, and enjoy yourself. Uh, in terms of storage, you've got place for for paddles, etc. We're just doing a boat now for a fellow uh, down in southeast Florida, uh, putting some rod holders in because he wants to cruise the intercoastal and do a little fishing. So you have the ability to uh, customize the boat for some a little fishing. Um, the other things that we have, uh, obviously storage is important. You can see a little vent on the front here. So you've got lots of, of storage in this boat. Let me just put the mic. Uh, dry vented storage throughout the boat, side to side, which for a little boat of this side is quite sufficient. There's a little uh, sunbrella top that most people will order. You'll see snaps around this boat. They like to keep the sun off. The, the upholstery just allows it to last a little longer, but in the event that you forget that, you don't have to worry because the, the water's just going to go out the, the transom. You also have a large uh, vented storage compartment up forward. Again. Throw your anchor. In this boat, we've got three life jackets or four life jackets stored up there. Um, Again, it's a fully liner boat, fuel on the foredeck. Uh, in this case, you can standard comes with the, the hardware that you see on, stainless hardware. Can put drop down cleats on this boat. Boat's rated for a maximum of 40 horsepower, unlike our 17s. Can put a 25. My kids have a nice 25 on theirs, honestly, and uh, they run at about 30 miles an hour. Uh, so not a huge difference, but a lot of fun. Um, we also have an option on this boat. This boat uh, does have one option, unlike a standard boat, and has what we call a little walk-through seat back. So far we uh, have had the opportunity to build boats for a lot of older clientele, and that just makes it a little easier to get in and out. Uh, and this, uh, this walk-through seat back is also stowable uh, in the compartment underneath here. So if you want to leave it uh, out of the way for uh, ease of access, because there's only two of you boating, you can just leave it out all the time and uh, make it easy. Um, come standard with the bilge pump, as I say, navigation lights, stainless wheel, as you see on this boat. 
uh, and then uh, the, your controls, etc., depend on little engines like with boats with engines like this depend. Uh, we also have an option in on this boat of a swim ladder. Uh, typically, because it's so low, a lot of customers don't like to put it on, but uh, I do put it on a number of boats for customers who wish to have it. Again, it goes on the port side of the boat on the transom, not just similar to our 17s. It's got a three-rung ladder, uh, making it easy to board the boat from the, the stern when you have the engine off, of course. Thanks very much, Brian. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me about uh, your perspective on the boats and helping us to point out some of the features. Uh, Brian is from Big Toy, who's one of our dealers here in Southwest, our dealers in Southwest Florida, over in uh, Venice, uh, Fort Myers area. Uh, my name is Scott Hansen. I'm the owner of Roster Boats, designer of these craft, and uh, and it's uh, it's been a pleasure to be here, and uh, it's a pleasure to work with you and all of our other dealers throughout the country.